gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Today I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to be here in the chapel of the Mercy University Hospital and to join virtually with the sick and their caregivers from this hospital here, the Mercy Hospital, and the other hospitals, nursing homes, and care facilities and indeed family homes throughout the diocese of Cork and Ross and beyond. I'm delighted that so many could join us for this very special celebration. As we pray in solidarity with the sick, we want to give thanks and offer gratitude to all our caregivers, the doctors, nurses, carers, healthcare staff, from those preparing meals to cleaning rooms, porters, chaplains, pastoral care teams, and to all those administration, all those frontline workers who continue to make sacrifices, give generously and take risks to look after and care for the sick. Equally, we want to give thanks to the caregivers in family homes throughout the diocese. So many sick people are being cared for in their own homes by their own family. This celebration today has a particular significance as we live through these very challenging pandemic times. It's celebrated on the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes on the 29th World Day of the Sick. What for me is most significant about Lourdes is that it's the only place in the world where the sick take center stage. In Lourdes, if you like, the sick are the guests of honour. Today, you, the sick, are our guests of honour as we gather to pray in solidarity with you and express our closeness and the closeness of God as we give thanks to those who look after you in the caregivers. We turn to God as we begin this celebration. We light a candle and Siobhan Kenny is going to come forward. And Siobhan, whose role is values and culture lead here, who helps to 
all of us to preserve the mercy and Catholic tradition here in the hospital. This candle is a symbol of the light and the hope that our healthcare workers have brought in their service of the sick in the hospitals and in the wider community. And so we turn to God, a God of love, mercy and compassion, as we acknowledge that we're not perfect, there's times we fail, but we turn to our God in confidence as we seek forgiveness and wholeness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may with the help of her intercession rise up from all our iniquities. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We now listen to God's word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rejoice, Jerusalem. Be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice, rejoice for her, all you who mourned her. That you may be suckled, filled from her consoling breast. That you may savour with delight her glorious breasts. For thus says the Lord, Now towards her I send flowing peace like a river and like a stream in spate the glory of the nations. And her breast will be nurslings, be carried and fondled in her lap. Like a child comforted by their mother will I comfort you, and by Jerusalem you will be comforted. At the sight your heart will rejoice and your bones flourish like the grass. To his servants the Lord will reveal his hand. This is the word of the Lord. of 
Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. God's closeness to the sick is captured in one of the lines from that first reading from Isaiah. Like a child comforted by their mother, so I will comfort you. In the gospel story of the wedding feast of Cana, God is revealed by his son Jesus as close to his people. It's a joyful event, 
a young couple's wedding feast, that Jesus chooses to perform his first miracle. But God continues to be with that couple, not just on their wedding day, but in the ups and downs, the high points and joyful times, but also the difficult times in their lives. Our God promises to be with us in all the ups and downs that make part of our life journey. The God revealed in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus isn't indifferent to our sufferings or our sickness, but a God who assumes our weakness and pain and transforms it through the power of love. By his resurrection, Jesus shows that God's suffering love is ultimately victorious. So I say to each person who is going through sickness in this hospital, in another hospital or at home, that God is close to you in your sickness and suffering. Our God promises us that he is greater than sickness and suffering, that he doesn't allow it to have the last word. And so if you're a patient here in the hospital or in another hospital, in a nursing home, a care facility, sick in your own home, feeling not terribly well at this time, or perhaps even feeling very, very sick with the loss of being able to have visits from family and loved ones. Jesus wants to reassure you of his life-giving love for you personally, and he wants to reassure you that you're not alone. He wants to reassure you of his closeness and his comfort and support. While we meet God in prayer and in our own personal relationship with him, we also meet God in those around us. Christ's love for us is revealed in different ways. For you as patients in the hospital, in care facilities, nursing homes, you experience that love and care through the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, the healthcare staff, chaplains, pastoral care team, porters, those who clean your rooms, those who prepare your meals, those involved in the background in administration, all frontline workers who continue to make sacrifices, to give generously, to take risks, and at times have to self-isolate from their own families in order to look after you. To those who are sick at home, you receive that care through your family, those around you who provide that love and support. And today, as Bishop, on behalf of the people of the Diocese of Cork and Ross, I want to thank each frontline worker here in Mercy University Hospital, in the other hospitals here in our city and county, nursing homes, care facilities. To our caregivers who are caring for the sick in their own homes. You are generously sacrificing, saving lives, and I want to express solidarity. Together, you are hope, you are light, and you are joy to so many peoples. With patients not having visitors, your human presence takes on new meaning. Your simple smile, your acts of kindness become so important. Patients can't always recognize you with the PPE or the masks, but your Christ-like kindness is always seen and felt. Pope Francis referred to you as the next door saints. You're the real heroes performing your duty so that others can be cared for through your selfless service. Your witness can be an example and an inspiration to all of us. We can learn from you. As Pope Francis put it, if we become aware of this miracle of the next door neighbor saints, if we can follow their tracks, the miracle will end well, for all is good. So to the patients and the staff, to those sick at home and care their carers, I want to reassure you of my prayers and the prayers of so many throughout the diocese, not just today, but over the last number of months and into the future. You are and you continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. 
And that's the reason that I invited people from all over the diocese in homes and parishes to join us by way of live stream this morning so that we can be in solidarity in prayer and give thanks for our health care workers at the same time. I'd like to finish with a story of hope. The children in Puglia in the south of Italy in a gesture of hope and solidarity began to draw pictures of a rainbow, a symbol of hope. Over the picture they wrote the Italian phrase andrà tutto bene, which means all shall be well. They put the pictures in the windows of their homes and their apartments. They posted them on their social media and the gesture spread all over Italy. It's a phrase probably unknown to them, which was first used by Julian of Norwich, a Christian mystic of the Middle Ages. All shall be well, and it's rooted in our Christian message of hope. It's the hope that gives us confidence in a God who will ultimately triumph in his goodness, his love, knowing that nothing can shake that. Together, and with our unwavering faith in God, we can and will overcome this present challenge and appreciate even more keenly the message and the power of Christ's resurrection to bring new life, healing and hope. Andra tutto bene. All will be well. invite those who are leading us in the prayer of the faithful to come forward as we bring our needs and the needs of all the world before the Lord in our prayer. On this feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, we bring you our prayers, trusting in a God who hears us as we pray. For the church, that at this time the church extends compassion towards the world, offering words of consolation and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, on this World Day of the Sick, we pray for all those who are sick, especially for those in hospitals, that through the care they receive, they will experience healing and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own country, that all our people work together to reduce the incidence of COVID-19 in our hospitals and community. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious For all in the caring professions, especially those working in the Mercy Hospital, that our staff will have time to rest from their work and be renewed in body and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For all those providing essential services, both public and private, that their work be accepted with gratitude and their efforts bear fruit. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For those people who are experiencing isolation and loneliness, may they know on the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes that Mary, our mother, is with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For our young people, that they may find the encouragement that they need to sustain them through these uncertain times and trust that there is a brighter future ahead. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For all our deceased, especially our family members and those who have sadly died from the coronavirus, that they may now live in light and peace and that those who grieve may experience consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Invite everybody to bring their own personal prayers, those prayers that they have in the intimacy of their own hearts to the Lord now in a moment of silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Jesus. Good and gracious God, hearer of all the prayers, the prayers we've spoken aloud, and those silent prayers we offered from the intimacy of our own hearts. And we make our prayer 
through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God to praise and bless and glorify your name on the commemoration of Our Lady of Lourdes. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as together we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power of the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things 
and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the setting a pure sacrifice may be made and offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, humbly we implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. On the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Fimbar, St. Faulkner, and all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, mere and worthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. (laughs) Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form a divine teaching, together we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We pray for a moment for peace, peace in our world, peace in our own hearts. For all those who are troubled in spirit at this time, we pray for the gift of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not born in the you just in a moment of silence to make your own spiritual communion. I'd invite you to join with me if you'd like this prayer of St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you now as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. a time for remembering, a time to recall the trials and the triumphs, the fears and the falls. There's a time to be grateful for moments so blessed, the jewels of our memory where love is our guest. There's a promise of God that is written in the stars for all who may travel, no matter how far. God will be your companion each journey shadow of loved ones to lighten your way. There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasure in our dreaming from the soul to the eyes. And wherever we gather, in the light of God's grace and for all whom we remember they will ever have a place in the quiet of this evening at the close of 
this day we will rest on our journey to the lord we shall pray may we thank god for blessings for the moments we've shared as we seek for tomorrow close by us you'll stay there is treasure in our fields there is treasure in our skies there is treasure in our dreaming from the soul to the eyes and wherever we gather in the light of god's grace and for all whom we remember and for you all whom we remember and for you who we remember you will ever have a place Sacrament, we beseech you, O Lord, your mercy, that we may rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary. May we, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, I invite Margaret McKiernan, the Director of Nursing, just to say a few words on behalf of the Mercy Hospital. I would first of all like to say that thank you to everybody who participated in this Mass today, virtually, and those who also helped with every part of the preparation of our church. We are privileged in the Mercy Hospital to have hosted this very special celebration, a Mass which commemorates and all, all the people, which remembers everybody who, who works in healthcare, but most importantly, uh, the sick. And that is the sick in our own hospital, the sick um, spread throughout our wider parish. The only constant in the last year of healthcare for us has been the continuing demand to adapt and change as our experience of COVID-19 has evolved. Some days feel good and some days feel strange. As those who provide care to the sick, we have all learned to work differently and to learn new skills that we thought we never could. We know that every patient is someone in fear, unsure of what will happen after they are admitted here. We know that families may not be able to be with our patients in the way they were previously. But remember, behind the mask of every staff member is someone special whose focus is caring for you. Behind the mask is someone to guide you through these uncharted waters. Behind the mask is someone leading the way, planning and supporting staff throughout the day. Behind the mask is the person who will sit at the bedside with you when your family cannot be there. Behind the mask, someone silently prepares, cleans your room, prepares your meals, prepares your medications for your clinical plan of care. Behind the mask, there is one ministry for all. No role is too big or no request is too small. Give us all your grace, O Lord, so that we speak calmly, clearly and truthfully with each other. Allow the sick in our care to feel your healing touch through the compassionate care of our nurses, doctors and support staff. Let us trust in you and know that this time of adversity will end. Just to offer my own words of thanks to
to all here in the Mercy who've made this celebration possible, and to the wider community through the technology and the great work of Peter, our videographer, who has made this possible. Michael Bradley, who's a, an oncology nurse here, who provided us, you would have heard his voice and hopefully seen him there singing, and Joe Gunn, who accompanied him, to Father Marius, our chaplain, and to the wider kind of community here in the hospital. Different members of the community who read prayers, and in many ways they were reading prayers on behalf of other people. Anne O'Keefe, Lisa Tuhi, Rob O'Farrell, representing the family of the hospital here, offering the prayers on your behalf. They're not easy times for any of us, but we support one another. And when you're sick, it's even more difficult. But together as a community, we can support and strengthen one another. Our presence here today, being here myself, but also to that wider community, is an expression of our solidarity and support, something that will continue in the weeks and months ahead. And so I invite you to bow your heads or to receive God's blessing. And today we give a special blessing, particularly to all those who are sick and feeling the burden of sickness at this time. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May the God of all consolation bless you in every way and grant you hope all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. May God restore your health and grant you salvation. Amen. May God fill your heart and peace and lead you to eternal life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. In mercy, we touch the hearts of those who are in misery. In mercy, we're touched by them and feel their strength and courage. In mercy, we heal the pain of those who are in sorrow. In mercy, we're healed by them and see the face of hope. For the circle of mercy is timeless, the spirit of life itself, which roots us in faith and lifts us in hope and holds us in God's loving care and holds us in God's loving care. In mercy, we welcome those the world has left rejected. In mercy, we're drawn within the loving heart of God. In mercy, we forgive the incompleteness in another. In mercy, our sins are healed and we are whole again. For the circle of mercy is timeless, the spirit of life itself, which roots us in faith and lifts us in hope and holds us in God's loving care and holds us in God.